is, uh, how should I say, in constant communication with our Dr. Rhonda Hamilton, uh, talking about all things DC, particularly the health and the welfare and the genuine uh, need to get an audience with whomever will listen and with whomever will help make a change. And so today she has provided me with some guests, by the way, Dr. Hamilton, it's a pleasure to see you again. <laughs> Likewise, Stevie, thank you. <laughs> okay, but today we're going to be speaking specifically about the Marbury Plaza tenants and their plight. And for some of you who might not be familiar, if you've seen it on the news, you've seen um, how some tenants within the District of Columbia have been suffering under the tutelage of what can be best described by some as slumlords. Now, I particularly have not been to those, um, to the plaza itself, or plaza, however you want to say it. Come on. <laughs> but but the, the, pur the purpose behind this is that Dr. Rhonda sent me this press release, and uh, there were some specific questions that needed to be asked of leadership within D.C. and the D.C. Council specifically. And so uh, not only do I have Dr. Hamilton here with us, I have a couple of tenants who have uh, taken the opportunity to voice not only their concerns as individuals, but maybe what we b might be seeing as a whole for tenants all around. And so joining me, I have evangelist Brenda Graham, and Robert Price. So thank you both also for joining me here today. Pleasure. Absolutely. So um, let's get started here, Dr. Hamilton. If, if you want to take the lead for our listeners to give a better picture as to why you're here today. Yes, and again, thank you so much, Stevie, and I, uh, pleasure with uh, thanks to Odyssey Radio for having us. The Marbury Plaza tenants uh, for much of uh, almost a decade now has been in the news and there are many folks who believe they know the story but we have been adamant to help folks to reintroduce them to the reality that these families are still living without heat Stevie they're still living with uh, leaking pipes and uh, uh, exposure to hazardous and toxins and uh, just a couple of days ago there uh, were many that were relocated because of carbon monoxide concerns um, we've been uh, very much embattled in a uh, what I would call a fight. We've rallied down to the Wilson Building. We have all of the council members' attention. What we don't have are their actions or the representation of the political will to do something about these tenants in the district that are seemingly having to be living, left to live in uninhabitable conditions. Tenant bills of rights, the uh, lack of enforcement and the codes for housing regulations continue to be at the forefront of our concerns. Um, we have to have change. Um, Mr. Robert White, Council Member Robert White, who is currently running for re-election and also chairs the Housing Committee, simply has not been able to offer these tenants and many tenants across the city with resolutions or enforcements that will keep them healthy and keep them from living in these conditions. And so we are spreading this message far and wide that there has to be a change. And all too often in these election cycles, um, the real issues don't come out. And so we are forever grateful to you and Odyssey for always leaving a door open for us to come and help the city to understand that there has to be change at our leadership level. And that also includes our mayor. Ooh, you just said a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, but and, it's true. And we just got started. Yeah. So what I what I do want to circle <laughs> back on, and is something that you said that caught my ear, and if this was television, you would have seen my eyebrows reach the top of my forehead. <laughs> I know, that's right. <laughs> when, <laughs> when you said something about uh, some tenants having to be re... I'm going to say removed. Not, re not, I'm not going to say relocated. Forcedly evicted. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's removed is not relocated no. from your home because there is a health risk and i.e. carbon monoxide. So is this something, you know, that's prevalent within the apart of uh, the plaza? Are they apartments? Are they condos? I don't want to get it wrong. They're apartments. Yes. Okay. And three weeks ago, the front building boiler was leaking carbon monoxide and the fire department came out and told them that it's uninhabitable for them to use that. So that means that we both boilers for the back high rise and the 
front high rise, and we're inhabiting, we're in, we're inhaling asbestos, various mold spores, other hazardous things that's coming through the vents. Um, we're having breathing issues, as you probably can tell with me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we have children testing positive for um, lead and um, other things that they've been exposed to there. We have tenants who actually have rats in their apartments. Mm -hmm. That We had one tenant put on our, t our tenant page a video of when they go to bed at night, they have cameras in their house. Mm -hmm. The rats come out and they take turns and they live. They don't even go to the bathroom at night mm -hmm. and their kids sleep in their room. Okay, we have mold everywhere, everywhere. The leaking pipes going to the garage is constant. It's only by the grace of God nobody has fallen. We, we, oh my God, this morning, taking a shower was mm -hmm. like, uh, so when I got in there, the water was cold, ice cold. I'm like, oh my God, you know? And then I kept running the water. I cut the cold water off, the hot water came on. It was just a mess. It kept switching from hot to cold. Do you want? You know what that's like to take a shower, right. and then you get out and you have suds on you. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's just uninhabitable. And I think they have allowed this property to become deteriorated like that because they are, have plans for this property, and they have no mm. concerns for those of us living there. And see, I, this is not my first time on the rodeo like this. I went through this with Fred Douglas Public Housing. Frederick Douglass Public Housing. We went through this when they did the Hope Six. Okay? Okay. So we went through this. They left Fred Douglas and Stanton dwellings to dilapidation so bad. People's ceilings falling like where we are now. Uh -huh. So I've been through this. Uh -huh. and, and like I'm telling tenants, you all need to prepare yourselves because they're going to shove you up out of here like dung on a shovel. I'm just being honest. They want that property, but they don't understand the devastation we're living right. at, in this property. Who, who want to go to sleep and pray that you, you don't die in your sleep from carbon monoxide? Okay. Or, or you shaking your kids at night to make sure they're all right? Okay. What is that about? No. No. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Price, you're sitting over there awfully quiet. But you're well, in the background, you're going to preach. Well, so, okay. well, share, with, share with our listeners what kind of experience that you are facing or, or you know, what, what's going on from your perspective as well. Well, first, I was going to say thank you. Uh, and I'm actually jubilant to be here. In Come on, call a little closer in support, there. In support uh -huh. of uh, the residents of Marbury Plaza Apartments. I've been a tenant there, I want to say fortunately, but unfortunately for almost four years now. And the building has been deteriorating. And it has been deteriorating at a vast rate. Uh, I've seen people, uh, safety issues, which uh, I have personally jeopardized myself and my freedom by taking the responsibility of being an advocate for safety for the senior citizens, one particularly across the hall from me and also down the hall from me, to make sure that they get in the building safely at nighttime. There's been gun shootings on the floor, uh, I believe last year. Uh, also, uh, I lost my child in a custody issue because of the living yeah. conditions in Marlboro Plaza uh, this year, in June 2nd, 2023. Uh, and my unit itself is not as bad as some of my res as some of the residents' units, but it is, it is, it is concerning. Uh, I've had a hole in my uh, hallway bathroom, 28 by 33 inches, Whoa. which uh, a a rat fell through, mm. and uh, I guess it was hurt, and it died in the tub. I, I smelt the 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 the, 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 yeah. the funk of it, mm. noticed it, took a picture, and sent it to. Mr. Raddick, which was the lawyer that is representing the organization in which we are fighting against. Mm -hmm. uh, February 9th of this year, there was a fire on the 8th floor, uh, the apartment 816, where uh, they had to knock down the apartment doors, and they put a faulty lock on my door, so I've been living with that faulty lock up until July, where people were able just to pick my lock with a screwdriver and pop it right open. And so, come on in. And come right on in, and I filmed that as well. Uh, they did eventually put another Slim Jim lock up there, but you know anyone can kind of get in. I'm not gonna give apartment number. Okay, go. That's what's like, and you need to stop right there. For my safety, but they put they put me at at, at risk because I had to stay over my cousin's house a couple of times. I wasn't quite sure what that shooting was in regards to. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, water leaks are terrible. I have videos of water leaks waking up in the morning and stepping in the water, just puddles of water. 
uh, the, the shower, the heating, the heating condition, it seems like every winter, uh, two, one, one or two days a week, the heat's off or something's going on with the water. And it's a constant thing. And it seems, it seems that uh, Marbury Plaza, they do have a, a, a motive. And I, I, I do believe that the motive is just to get rid of the tenants and do something else with that building. And the way to drive the tenants out would be to just keep the building at a just low, low, low maintenance rate. You know, just do the necessary things that they have to do to appease, you know, the tenants. And other than that, let's just go ahead and inconvenience these, these guys. And hopefully one by one they get up out of here. And the sooner the better. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, uh, for me, it's the biggest thing is, you know, the, the, the maintenance is, is not good and the safety is not good. People are dying in that building. Mm -hmm. People are literally dying mm -hmm. in that building. And I think because the, the, a lot of them are old and they just, they can't get around the way they need to. At one point, the lift wasn't working for the, for the, uh, handicap. the handicap lift just wasn't working. And, you know, when you can't when you can't come out your building as an old as a senior as geriatric yes. because you know that you can't get downstairs mm -hmm. and you're gonna sit upstairs. You know, yes. right. family's important, and I know most mm -hmm. people have families, but it's just, it's it's just sad. And I don't think so. When you move into an apartment complex, some people do have the option of buying a house. Some people don't want to be responsible for the house, so you want to get an apartment complex. Mm -hmm. So if anyone listening, I understand that when you get an apartment complex, you normally want to try to get something good for the children if you mm -hmm. have children for the school. Mm -hmm. If not, then you want to try to get something safe for yourself, mm -hmm. you know, for your welfare. And when you have an apartment complex owners that don't care about your welfare, but yet you have not that many opportunities to leave there because of financial reasons, then you're kind of stuck. You're, you're, you're burdened. Mm -hmm. And they're still using you for money, and you, you mm -hmm. are using them for a place to stay, but you are unhappy because you're unsafe. Safety is a big part. Just like yes. health and wellness, safety is a big part. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to say something about safety. We had two shootings in our lobby, yes. two months apart. The first time, they, they left two bullet holes, like this much apart. The second time, do you know two more bullet holes r right under those th that were there previously? Can you imagine? Can you imagine coming down the stairs to go out the front door and it's a rat running around in the lobby? The dead rat was in the lobby. You remember the dead rat yes, was in the lobby? Yes, yes. Big one too. The man stopped them and killed them because he was running around in the lobby. I mean, uh -huh. come on. Can you imagine? Anyone can get in and out the door. The Anyone. Want. The homeless people are living in there the because building. we don't have security. Yes. They they literally li live on the floor in the hallway. They used to sleep on the stairwell or in the laundry room and hide, right? encroach between the washer or the dryer. They literally plug their phone up in the hallway and lay down and go to sleep. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. So, hmm. We were supposed to have some other guests this morning. Okay. And, it, uh, and I'm thankful that the two of you are here because uh, you give a real hand perspective. I'm talking a daily mm. perspective yes. of what is happening and i always say a person's perception is their reality mm -hmm. but if you know like when you see a car wreck somebody's going to see something a little different mm -hmm. they just know that the car wreck happens but you, your perspective of it your perception, your perception. is different. different but the two of you <laughs> are saying the same thing exactly. and you don't live in the same house no. or the apartment nope. but you 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 have the same shell if mm -hmm. you will and it sounds like you're living in a shell mm. um so, I can, okay, so you still have to pay rent, am I correct? Oh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so what happens if the rent is not paid on time? Is there a paying your rent? Have not worked for these citizens. The uh, judge, Judge Kravitz, ordered a reduction in the rents as a punishment. And what's happening is that these tenants are having to now fight these owners in bankruptcy court because now there's an order to have the rents fully restored, even though they were uh, reduced to punish the owner for not taking care of these existing conditions. So the city would have you to believe in by city because there's an emergency hearing uh, that was called at the bankruptcy court. You mentioned Mr. Raddix for the attorney for the seller, Mr. Mark Raddix. Uh, many of these uh, under, uh, uh, officials and, and representatives in the city are aware of the condition that they're living in, but it seems as though the city's inaction 
to protect the health and well-being of the citizens is now left them fighting, fighting in bankruptcy court so that these attorneys are not able to uh, have the owner receive rents. And let's talk about that. Do you know, even though that this owner has allowed this building to deteriorate to this point, um, is still able to collect rents and tenants are still facing eviction? Still facing eviction right now. <laughs> Can you imagine? In, in bankruptcy oh, no. court, the attorneys represent that the, the owner who has to show that he has the solvable means financially to, to carry out this bankruptcy process very smugly represent to the judge that uh, the owner's cash position is changing as a result of recently collected funds from evicted tenants. So this is stuff that's a matter on record. And so uh, it is so important that we help our city officials understand that tenants living the way that these tenants are should not be forced to wait for court outcomes in order that their health and well-being mm -hmm. is not affected as a result. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're fighting for. We're fighting for folks to understand. And for anybody out there that thinks that this is just a Marbury Plaza matter. I was going to ask. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was going to ask. Woodbury Village Apartments <laughs> yes. went through this same thing with Capital Citywide. Realty. Um, with Wingate Apartments, we understand, are experiencing tenants on the 10th floor with their sewage back up in their to uh, uh, tubs and things. We have tenants over in Woodland Apartments that are calling and crying out. Um, this city, we have tenants over in Nash Place that are still dealing with this. And so this is a citywide issue. Citywide. And there are members oh. on the council that when we ask for their support in getting the proposed amendments put in place, would reduce this to just being a Ward 8 issue, mm -hmm. and that is a problem. Business development in this city mm -hmm. is placed above mm -hmm. the wealth and uh, health and well-being of our citizens, mm -hmm. and that's what this is about. Mm -hmm. And I believe that they have intentions for this property to do to tear it down and redevelop it into something else that we will not be able to afford. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did with the Hope Six at Fred Douglas and Stanton dwellings. Most of the tenants could not afford to come back. Even in the public housing units, they have right. to pay gas, electric, and water. Right. And we don't pay utilities. They're, they're included in our rent. Uh -huh. So they don't like buildings like this because they can't make money like this. Right. But if they had gas, electric, and water meters per unit, then they would be making a lot of money. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, hold on I'm just a second. Okay. I'm okay. speaking today with uh, Dr. R uh, Rhonda Hamilton, who was originally with MI Mother's Keeper, and she's uh, put together some collaborations with Healthy DC and Me and the Capital City. And I also have tenants, Evangelist Brenda Graham and tenant Robert Price. And we're talking about. Uh, if you haven't already started listening uh, or you're just now joining us, we're talking about the plight of D.C. tenants who are, based on what I'm hearing, are at the mercy mm -hmm. of, of those who have the power, but also the will, not the will, they have the power and the means to make change, but from what I'm hearing and what I'm understanding, it's not happening. Now, I also have to say, uh, before doing this interview, I have not yet reached out to anybody in, in D.C. Council or anything like this to get their perspective of, of what it is that they're seeing. But when your boots on the ground, if you're a tenant who's actually living in this building, you know, we can, because they haven't said it out loud, I guess, we can only assume yes. that that's their atten intention. Mm -hmm. um, but once the path has been, you know, made, like you said, there, there are others that were you know, pay paradise and, you know, put up a parking lot. But no, this is not a parking lot going up. These are unaffordable mm -hmm. houses mm -hmm. for individuals who are part of the city, mm -hmm. who live in the city, mm -hmm. who make it the city the city. Mm -hmm. And you are being treated, I'm going to say it, subhuman. And I yes. am so distraught in my heart right Bless now. You. And I normally don't get emotional, but I'm feeling so distraught yes. in my heart that I just don't understand yes. Now, um, I, I, I can see just a little, but just to break something down so far that you have nowhere else to go but to run like the rats in the building. Exactly. 
it just does, it just does, uh, it's just too much. So go ahead, Dr. Hamilton. Yes, and, and Stevie, you have a very great uh, uh, observation of what it is, and I would love to hear the responses from members of the council. Um, I would hope that you would get better than we've got. These tenants have extended a formal invitation, or informal, I should say, invitation for the mayor and her team to, to walk the property, to understand what they're dealing with. They're literally in court right now fighting to prove that conditions that the attorneys for the sellers say or owners say are have been addressed or don't exist, that they do exist. And I would invite your listeners to uh, social media, if they're fortunate to have a, a social media account, Facebook. These tenants have a, a Facebook group, Marbury Plaza uh, Tenants United for Change, where they detail many of these accounts that you've heard this morning. The pictures are there. The, uh, you, you know, pictures don't lie. Mm -hmm. You know, and so these tenants are crying out daily. And and it's interesting. You mentioned at the top of the uh, programming, do you say Plaza or Plaza? And it's interesting, uh, synonymous to the history of Marbury Plaza. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's so interesting for folks that know our history. Marbury Plaza was the creme de la creme. You know, yes. back in the day. Yes. And so to have other advocates. And, and progressive mindsets to come and not understand the history of this and what this represents. And so there are some that have uh, framed this that these citizens are looking or that social housing would be social housing would be their uh, antidote. And social housing is just another way of saying public housing. And that is an insult to the history mm -hmm. of what this particular property represents. And so again, mm -hmm. we are disappointed with our leadership. There have been formal requests made to uh, Mr. Mendelson, the chair counsel who has agreed to set up a community meeting with the Office of Attorney General. Okay. Um, and, and that hasn't happened. Um, I've reached out to the Office of Attorney General, talked to Mr. Swab myself in the community, um, and still this meeting has not been set. Uh, the mayor has not responded to the tenant's request to come to property. Th again, there is no representation of any political willpower from these representatives that we keep electing mm. to help our citizens. And it's time like these when their true representation is put to the test. Now, aren't there tenant rights? Did where when you as as tenants seriously when you <laughs> sign your lease, did were you given information about? You know, this is what you can expect from yeah, me, or absolutely not. okay. And, and I actually read some of the uh, some of the leases. And, okay. And they're not uh, obligating because of the standards of their uh, living conditions in there. Oh, okay. Um, so you know, they're in violation, completely in violation. And and if we didn't have people like Dr. Hamilton and others to help us out, I, I don't think our voice would be heard nope. as adamant as it is now. Yeah. I mean, because she's such a good speaker and she's uh, a foot soldier with sweat equity behind her back. Right, yes. Come on. Like, uh, yes. She's able to uh, put forth a great effort to let our voices be heard because it's, it's, it's a, uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's troublesome. It's troublesome. It, it really is. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm hurt more because I did lose my son. I'm yes. still in communication with him, but just seeing some of the older people who have, who just, uh, they, they need help because uh, I can get up and get it. Right. And some of these people just can't. Right, right, right. It has gotten so bad that the owners will not authorize for management to do any repairs, um, such as <laughs> my toilet. Mm -hmm. ah. My toilet went bad, and it was leaking. And I'm not going to talk about what it was leaking around the bottom, okay? And it took them three months, three months. And it wasn't until I got on the news and complained that they came and brought me a daycare-sized toilet. <laughs> I have pictures of it. Oh my goodness. I, and I have pictures of it. You are not. I have problems with my knees, severe problems. They right. have been severely injured and one's been operated on. You know I can't bend down that low. So one of my neighbors told me I had a bedside commode. She took the brace and set it over the toilet so that I wouldn't have to squat so low. I have pictures in my phone right here. I'm in a program for seniors two days a week. Do you know they bought me a commode? Mm. They bought me a commode. Mm. And then they paid people to put it in. Wow. I passed out from the heat this summer because the air conditioner was oh. off most of the summer. Most of the summer, yes. Ooh, and it was wicked, too. My program bought me an indoor 12,500 BT, whatever you call it, and <laughs> yes, put it in my, my apartment mm -hmm. because they didn't want me to die from that heat. 
Mm. Stevie, you asked about the lease and the language when they are uh, officially becoming tenants. There's something called the District of Columbia Tenant Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't see, there's a Tenant Bill of Rights Amendment Act from 2014. What the Marbury Plaza tenants, uh, along with our advocacy, realize is that there is language on the books that should protect against what we're speaking on. Okay. Um, the reality that the Department of Buildings has the opportunity to, uh, after enforcements and understandings of infractions being issued, they have the ability to correct the repairs and put a lien on the property. That didn't happen. Under Title 14 housing, there's language that if in fact tenants are found to be living in uninhabitable property, and by the courts in this case, it's been determined that that's the case, tenants have a right to void their lease. But here's the challenge. Where are and they going to go? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so what the tenants and our advocates come to get, came together to do was to present Mr. Robert White with the understanding that there needs to be a third option. So we've determined that the property is uninhabitable, but now we need an option that has action behind it that has oversight because tenants that have determined to, that have been determined to live in uninhabitable property should have the remedy of the repairs taking place and not waiting for legal proceeding outcomes to happen and so again we have the opportunity to act do we have the representation that will come forward and do so okay so do you have the representation and, and that is where I was gonna go um, have you, and I'm pretty sure knowing you, Dr. Hamilton, <laughs> have you reached out to any of your attorney friends who might want to do something pro bono? Because there are a lot of advocacy yes. groups, nonprofits within D.C. Um, you know, they, they have programs for young children, for seniors, like you were mentioning. Okay. Um, but are there any entities out there or how can they reach you if they want to do something pro bono? Or is this, or, or do, are you just getting the impression, because her face is going all kinds of ways. I wish this was television, because you guys would be like, uh-huh, go ahead, ask Stevie, because you know I've already asked. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know. But is, is somebody going to take that challenge, or they, do, do you think, now this is a supposition, that they might be afraid to challenge the council? Or challenge the, the mayor. The ma oh, oh, okay. Well, let's go. You know, a press release oh, went out today. We <laughs> a press release went out today, as it has been throughout this process. And one of the things that the chairperson of the housing committee, who's running for another term, term, who's already been uh, appointed twice now, says that he wish he was as optimistic as we were for fighting for proactiveness as opposed to reactionary governing. And so when you have those type of mindsets sitting at the gate, you know, uh, the, wow. in charge of our social, do we have, in our city, we have a social justice department. Imagine that, that we have a social justice department in light of all of what you're hearing. I believe Ms. Jennifer Berger down at the office of uh, Attorney General is in charge of that. And we've been in constant communications with their office regarding us. The Office of Tenant Advocate, there's a network operating in this town. And, yes. and, and that network is dangerous to citizens who are on the outside of these circles. And so when you ask me about these groups, these landlord tenant advocates and, and legal understandings that are all funded by grants that are awarded by the mayor in the city. And so folks that know what side their, their bread that their butt that their bread is buttered on mm -hmm. know better not to act. And so I say that that's the only way, reason that tenants across the city would be allowed to be left to live like this is because they're not able to affect the network. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let let let's I'm going to play devil's advocate here because the kinds of things that you were describing didn't happen overnight. Absolutely. Okay. And I, I, I don't, you've lived there four years, uh, Mr. Price, and almost and how about 20. You? Almost 20. Yes. So you can go back some few yes. years with other leadership. Yes. So, you know, I just want to say, hey, what does this picture look like? Because it's not just the current administration. It sounds like this is something that we just do. It's something they do when they look at disenfranchised tenants as an extension to commodity signs. They look at us as a way to get rich, you know, or richer. I've, I've lived there for almost 20 years. I lived on two different floors. They were both mice infested. The, the apartment on the 11th floor, I just couldn't do it. 
So I moved down on the fifth floor, and I got rid of mine. All those mice are gone. I don't have roaches. It is so roach infested. You know, um, people don't know how to, what to do. I live alone, so I change habits, you know, the way I do things. So they won't, you know, want to be in my unit. But it's to the place now where I've been there and seen this property owned by two different people. And I'm told it's a group of them. And they sell it to each other for a tax write-off. Okay, yeah. okay. Can't you go to the courthouse and see who owns it? Absolutely. Can you, can you? Yeah, can't we, you? we know who own it. Okay. We know. But it's a, it's a group of them. They're friends. Can't, can't you go to the planning commission to see what is in the future for D.C.? Because things don't happen overnight. Just like when you're, you know, the, the planning commission will say, in five years we want to be able to build this grocery store on this corner. So there's economic development. There but is economic development, but I want to make sure that we're clear. Um, Evangelist Graham just touched on it. Um, there is an economic push for development of real estate in our city. And the reality of these social programs failing presents an avenue for this real estate grab that we see happening. Mm -hmm. We see tenants being offered money to move, to move based on TOPA rights. In Marbury Plaza's case, the TOPA rights were robbed of them because there's a bankruptcy understanding. And let's talk oh. about this this uh, political will and, and this uh, these folks that you would believe should be in place to help these tenants. I can tell you emphatically that on a conversation with Mr. Myers in the Attorney General's office that he said off record to the president of the Marbury uh, Tenant Association that uh, the system isn't really designed for you all to get ahead in this matter. It's okay, not. so this is, uh, Mr. Ratchet, do you want to have one no, more thing I'm, to say? Just <laughs> thank you, Dr. Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. The, the blatant, the, so we've got to deal with what the true problem is, and there are many folks that have migrated to our area that have other agendas, and their agendas don't necessarily include the plight of these these uh, no. residents and so yes there is a plan what we want to ask the city is why doesn't that plan include our marginalized low-income and working families okay we only fit in that plan of that family friends and lovers network when they look to us as an opportunity to do new development to disenfranchise mm -hmm. us to do new development or redevelopment to to move the tenants out the property and benefit from the property being in, in um, new right. or, or redeveloped. Okay. So we don't fit in that network. Okay, I mean, you know what? Unfortunately, my time clock, <laughs> I mean, we could just sit here all afternoon because oh, I, yeah. I don't even yes, think. I'm so right? Well, right. Steve, can no. I just take a minute and say just thank you? Oh, thank and you. And Dr. Hamilton. Right. God bless you both. Okay. It's, a, it's truly a pleasure. Yeah. But, but what I want to say is, you know, having been in. Uh, working in D.C. for a few years now here in this building, we can't see the, the Capitol anymore. Come on, let me tell you now. <laughs> but, <We're> booming. <laughs> booming, right? <laughs> booming on your back. Oh, and that's, absolutely. On and the that's, backs of poor people. And that's not what I'm talking about here. So, uh, Dr. Hamilton, do you want to share one last word? Because we do have to wrap up here. Yes, the word is that we need our citizens across the city to get involved and get engaged. One of the biggest hot buttons for me is that we recognize in this last election that there are over 300,000 registered DD vo DC voters that are not voting. When tenants are not engaged, typically, and when we're dealing with the public safety failures that we're dealing with as a city, when we see people sleeping in the street, we have the drug overdosing and things of that nature, there's a reason why all of these systems collectively are failing, and it points back to the leadership. If we don't actively come back to the table and exercise our voices and our rights to vote, we will not change this. All right. Amen, Amen, Amen I guess. <laughs> As I always say to our listeners before wrapping it up, mm -hmm. staying in touch to keep you in touch Amen. here on Odyssey DC. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you so much. Holy crap. Dr. Hamilton, I thank you. Thank you. I love you. Guys, okay. Thank you, guys.